And there's the first five minutes of data. You can see that battery number two started out at a lower voltage and it sagged much, much more under load than battery number one. That could be because of battery sulfation. That's possible. Uh, it could also be from some other factors, but let's see how this battery goes with time. If the voltage suddenly drops off early, I know that I have a weak cell. And that cell may be weak because it's damaged, or it may simply not be charged, in which case I'll have to do something to remediate that situation. But I'm just going to let this keep running, and see when the battery voltage sags to an unusable level, and make my decision then. Here's what our data looks like so far, and we're just after the 20 minute mark on this battery. The battery voltage has already dropped low enough that the inverter is complaining about low battery voltage. So I am not too hopeful about this battery. It has some sort of problem. And once I get a final voltage reading off of it, once the inverter shuts down, I can record the time and we can try to remediate this situation. Battery number one lasted about 48 minutes at an 80 amp discharge rate, which is very good for a 100 amp hour battery. Battery two lasted less than half that long, which is unacceptable. So these batteries were stored, potentially partially discharged for a long period of time. They may not have been cared for very well. So at least battery number two, I need to recondition. Now, the first thing I'm going to do to do that is to hook it up to my charger and uh, we're gonna charge it back up. Now I'm impatient, so I'm gonna do this fairly rapidly. I'm going to use my 45 amp battery charger down here. That's really faster than what you should use to charge this battery. But I don't want to take forever and I'm only going to do this once or twice probably uh, at this high rate and that's really not going to damage the battery just to do it a couple of times. So I'm going to put this on the charger and uh, let this battery charge most of the way up and then we'll move on. The battery is now fully charged, at least as far as the smart charger thinks. It's dropped the voltage down and it's now only charging with about one half amp of charge current. So it's pretty well fully charged. And I did the load test on this one and found that it only has about half the capacity as battery number one, so it has a problem. And the question now is, what's the problem? Well, there could be a couple different things. It could be sulfated by being stored uh, unused and not fully charged for a long period of time or it could have a bad cell. Uh, bad, mean, not necessarily meaning a bad cell, as in the cell is bad, but after sitting that long and not being used, a lot of times you'll end up with, there's six cells <clears throat> inside these batteries, and a lot of times you'll end up with one of the cells somewhere in here, self-discharging faster than the rest. So if you end up with five of the cells being 90% state of charge and one of them being 20% state of charge, when you charge the whole battery up, the ones that were 80% get an extra 20% state of charge, and the one that was 20% state of charge only is now 40%. And when you try to use the battery's capacity, all of the cells get drained evenly, and this one is the limiter. And if it was only 40% to start with, this cell will go dead, and now all of your other cells will have to try to recharge, basically, <clears throat> uh, this one bad cell. And if you keep it in that state for too long, you actually get a polarity reversal of that cell. It uh, reforms in the reverse polarity and it's permanently destroyed. And that's likely what happened to this bad battery over here. One cell went bad, these were all connected up in series. So when you try to run current through it, this one cell gets the, re gets the wrong polarity on it and uh, it gets destroyed. And that's likely what happened to that one. I don't think that's the case with this battery though. If you have a bad cell, your discharge curve in terms of voltage and time, if you have uh, voltage on this axis and time on this one, it'll start out high, slowly droop down, and then fall off a cliff because that one cell went dead. If you have a sulfated battery, it's going to be more of a typical decline at a higher internal resistance, and I think that's what I saw on this one. So likely it just has some sulfation in it. Now there's a number of ways that you can get rid of that, but we're pretty limited in terms of what we can do with these batteries. They are sealed AGM batteries. There's nothing you can do except from these terminals. Now there are products in the market that claim that they desulfate. It's all a bunch of bunk. 
There is no such magic product. Um, you can read supposedly scientific claims on the matter. I've done my, my research on it, and all of that's just bunk. You really don't need anything special to desulfate a battery. On these, we have to be pretty careful because I can't add water. Once the water's gone, it's gone forever. So I need to equalize this one, and then I'm going to uh, do this load test again over here. And hopefully the capacity will be back to about where it should be. Now I did do one heavy cycle already with this load and with the recharge, and that should help significantly break up some of the sulfation and equalize the state of charge in all the cells. But I'm going to uh, do one more step here. So after we charged it, <clears throat> we need to uh, basically overcharge this battery in a limited manner in order to in order to uh, let me unplug this a minute. And we don't need this charger anymore because it's done. So I'll take this off, set that aside. So we basically need to overcharge the battery slightly in a controlled manner uh, to force the current through these cells so that they can equalize. So basically some of the cells that are at 100% state of charge already, you overvolt them and force some current through them anyway, even though they don't want to accept it anymore. And the one cell in here that is actually a lower state of charge, uh, then get some of that current trickling through it, and it helps equalize them. Uh, secondly, the battery I think is slightly sulfated, and uh, the best way to desulfate a battery is to do a limited overcharge. Now if these were wet cell batteries, uh, the kind where you can pop the caps up and add water, I would just put it on a 16 volt charger and let it boil away for a few hours. That works pretty nicely. Uh, in this case I can't do that, so I'll show you the setup that I'm going to use. I have this archaic old dumb charger, and this likely will put out too much voltage, uh, so we need a way to regulate that. And for that, I have my variable auto transformer. Not everybody has one of these, so if you don't, you can make do with just a stupid old dumb charger like this. These bulk chargers are always set for way too high voltage. They damage batteries every time you use them, but it does make them pretty versatile for things like this. And I use this charger quite often for various different tasks. So I'm going to set this variable auto transformer to uh, 43 percent, which ends up being wall voltage. It should be about 125 volts. And I will connect the charger up to my battery. Positive to positive, negative to negative, of course. And this cable isn't quite long enough, but uh, we'll make do. It's set to 12 volts. And let's plug it in and see what happens. And you can see that the current jumped way up, uh, slowly trickling down. It's pulling about 3 amps into the battery right now. So let's check the voltage on it. I'm going to hook my multimeter up so I can just turn it on every time I want to check this. And we are at 15 volts. And that's about perfect. I want to have uh, about 15 volts on this battery. And what we're going to do is monitor the current going into the battery. And we're just going to monitor that for a while and see when it starts dropping. It uh, will likely stay around this level for a while. Uh, as it drops, the voltage will slowly rise. And when it does, I can turn my auto transformer here. I'll just crank it down a little bit. And you can see that the voltage starts to fall. And our current also fell. So basically I'm going to keep this at 15 volts, about, and run this for a number of hours. How many hours is debatable, uh, but I'm just basically going to monitor the current here and see if it starts dropping off at some point. Also, I don't know if you can hear it on camera, but you can hear the battery boiling inside, and that's normal. If it doesn't boil, you're not doing your job. Uh, that's the battery outgassing. It's permanently losing that water because I'm overcharging it. And that's not good, but I only plan on doing this once to recover the capacity that this battery lost from improper storage. And it's not going to lose that much water. It is an AGM battery. So I'm going to let this go for a while at about 15 volts. It's a little over 2 amps right now. And I'm just going to let this go for a while. It should help desulfate it. It will equalize it. 
and after uh, a number of hours, depending on what these different readings do, uh, then we can do this load test again and see if I improved the situation or not.